Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady. And I'm Aiden. And I'm John Hoffman, Hoffman Nursery. And here we are at one of my all-time favorite wholesale nurseries, picking up a Prius load of ornamental grasses. And Thanks, Bree. <laughs> yes. this is not how they ordinarily ship their plants. They're making an exception for us today. And we are going to give you a behind the scenes tour here at the most fabulous ornamental grass nursery in all of America. Really and truly it is. And I'm willing to bet if you have ornamental grasses in your garden, they probably started here. Now remember, this is a wholesale nursery. So this is not open to the public. Uh, so this is a very special tour for all of you YouTube viewers to give you kind of a better understanding of how the, literally the plant chain works. So as we get around into the greenhouses, I think your mind is going to be blown. So stay tuned for a super exciting tour. So we're on the other side, and we would put, I think, roughly 30 seedling trays in here to, to finish. And there'll be heat under here, we'll put uh, fin heating under here, and it will radiate up, of course, and grow these plants for us. They'll finish, I hope, in six weeks or so. And that's to keep the root system warm, but not have to waste the energy on heating the entire house. Correct. Yep, that's correct. So explain, because this is a new house that is still under construction. This is, yes. Um, this is a house that we uh, started construction months and months ago. Uh, we're still not done yet. We're waiting for electricians at this point and uh, the power company. We're waiting for uh, another team to come in to set up boilers and the heating system and we hope we'll have some uh, be able to put plants in this in this house in the next uh, couple of months so um, and it, again only mainly for seedlings in the first half of the year and then the second half of the year we'll be able to put uh, stage three tissue culture which is a very tiny plant barely with a root system that we will pot up and be able to finish those in the in the second half of the year so. <laughs> This is like the brain of the greenhouse. It is the brain of the greenhouse, and, the, and I'm not the brain behind this because I don't know much about this at all. Um, but this will control many things in this house. It will control the heat. It will open the, uh, uh, the vents on the top of the house. It will open and, and allow for the cooling of the house in the summertime. So this will, all of this will be this machine, this uh, unit here will tell the house how to operate and how to handle these plants and work with the plants. So, uh. so it's, it's funny, everyone, because the industry has changed a lot because of technology. I mean, just like the world. Yes. You know, now at nurseries, not only do you need growers, but you need to have people that understand like computer systems. Correct. Yep, that's exactly right. And it just has changed uh, the life uh, here at the nursery. We're able to run this house and another house we're about to go into. Again, we can, whoever has access to this on their phone, they're able to control this from anywhere in the world, actually. So it's, uh, and I'm pretty old school, so I'm not sure how it all works, but it's pretty cool that it does. So we're excited about it. This is a game changer as far as space goes, having yes. the tables slide. And what will happen with these tables, of course, they will be, we will prepare the seedling trays up in the production area. They'll be set on this table up there. They'll carry the table down here. And at the other end of this particular house, the one we're in, there will be a system that lifts this up full of plants, full of trays, and sets it on the rails and we just push them down the rail. Wow. And then they, they rotate through the house and, and of course finish. So uh, it's very exciting and uh, again, just having everything on here and 
And this technology has been out there for decades. Uh, we're finally catching up and taking advantage of it. So we're excited about this. Well, and this is really for labor saving. Of course it is. That's what we have to be so much more efficient in today's world. That's all there is to it. So we're excited. And this is my favorite size, everybody. This is called a landscape plug. Look at that perfect root system, and it's a nice small hole. So we're, we have just filled the Prius up with plants from here, and we're gonna be offering landscape plugs at the spring open garden. I really think that this size should be available retail. Um, I've been on a mission for years, because who wants to dig a giant hole? Well, the, actually, there is a company that's doing this um, that we sell through, Izel Plants, I-Z-E-L Plants. Uh, just go to their website. They are there for the, the, this exact uh, purpose here. So, And the link is in the description, everybody, you so you can browse their inventory. And then when you buy grasses, you'll know they started here. <laughs> in this magical so land of greenhouse joy our watering booms as you see the trays are all set in place uh, and they we set them in place because of the layout of the uh, watering boom so you know they handle you know 20 feet or so and um, they just are programmed to, to water the plants to go over the plants and take care of them as needed so we're not out here hand watering which would take quite some time but uh, this is, again, just so much more efficient uh, using the boom, so. And uh, efficient and consistent. Yes, exactly. Now in the summertime, it does, with the extra heat, of course, we do have to come through with a, a, a watering hose and water the edges. Uh, they tend to dry out quicker, so the boom does the majority of the plants, but then there will be a grower out here watering the edges just to make sure they don't dry out as quickly. So this is how Trevor waters this plant. He just stands on this and has here the hose and then he can like go back and forth and if he sees red then he can just water them. So this is a miscanthus crop that we do in, in January. They've been divided down and they are sitting on heated floors. They're heated uh, mainly at night uh, and of course are watered with the booms. And they will should be ready to sell in uh, late April or May. Yeah. Yeah, these were done in the middle of October. Okay. So, um, again, the Evercolor series, which you're, that's what you're looking at. A lot of the, uh, the Everest, the uh, Everillos, uh, wonderful series. Fabulous plants. Wonderful series. Game changer yeah. plants. Yes, it really is. So, uh, again, developed over in... Uh, in Ireland, Pat Fitzgerald is the uh, the, the original breeder, and uh, we're, we've had this uh, this line for many many years, and are very excited about it. So, but uh, yeah, this is the Carrick's house, so there's a lot to choose from, and again, they'll be ready in the next uh, hopefully the next few weeks. So, and for all the people watching, this is Reginald's favorite class of plants. He, the kitten, likes to run in circles yes. on the Evercolor series of, of Carex. We have kitties here that do the same thing. Yeah. Very specific. <laughs> I don't know if Pat Fitzgerald is actually a cat man, but he created plants that cats love. So <laughs> that's right. That's his real contribution to the world. <laughs> They're so beautiful. And seeing them in mass blocks like this, oh, boy, oh, boy. And that's Everillo. Yes, that's right. It will color up even more. We're under shade right now. Uh, when we have full sun days, we like to have the, the sedges under shade. Uh, so and it's also retaining some heat in here to help push the plants. Again, these floors are heated and you'll have some, uh, we'll be heating at night, try to maintain, uh, I think, I wanna say about 55 degree root systems. And uh, again, I think with the, with the frost blanket or the, uh, the shade cloth that that will help with that so help retain some of the heat so if i was a plant i would want to live in this greenhouse <laughs> maybe i'm a carex <laughs> <That's right. laughs>
We're in the head house. We're, we're in the head house. This is where we produce the plants. You'll, you'll see several different uh, uh, ways that we do produce these plants, whether it's from division or tissue culture or seedlings or so on. But uh, we're gonna we'll wander through the house and you get pieces of that. So. This is where the magic happens, everybody. <laughs> so this is division. We can take a, a clump of grass and we break it down into tiny pieces and then they go into the soil, into the media that. Uh, uh, we'll, and we'll get that. That's another section. But uh, yeah, that's how that's happening. And uh, this is how we produce plants. You take a, a large, a big, fat, uh, in-ground plant and then uh, cut the top off, cut a lot of the roots off, and then start to, to, to pull it apart. And uh, this is how we make our little babies. Yep. So here is the seedling section of our, uh, of our business. Uh, we have a machine that does that, but sometimes the seed are too large or have to be dealt a certain way. And this is how we're adding uh, by hand seedlings per, uh, per cell. And it's going to produce, again, I think roughly six weeks, we'll have plants to look at and to pot up into uh, our larger cells. So it just takes time. And you don't want, we don't put one seed per tray, per cell. We want to make sure there's several in there to give us a, night, a nice fat, um, it takes time, folks. I mean, yeah, these are, what, 288? Yes. So that's not the size you would want to plant directly in the ground. Uh, do, no, that's correct. You could go with a, a 72, but that's, that's still rather tiny. Uh, we would recommend uh, the 32s, of course. The 32s are the perfect size. Yes. Yeah. Machine, not in operation at the moment, but uh, you, you slide trays through, and then this... This piece right here, this arm, sucks up the seed out of a tray, flips it over and drops it in a line at a time, a row at a time in that tray. And it, it, it slowly pushes its way through. And on the other end, of course, we get a full, and it, it can work much quicker than by hand. But again, uh, only certain seed can be used in this situation, so. Good to have both. Yes, it is good to have both. So this machine here is a soil flat filler. So all of this will fill this tray. Which this is a 32. It's a 32 size tray. It will fill it with the media that we need to put our seedlings in and uh, our divisions and so on. So on the other end, we'll have a full tray. So there, so there it is filled. And it's on a conveyor belt, yes. so it continues to move through. And then this is the transplanter, which I've never operated. We're not going to operate. No. That, sorry. But what happens <laughs> is that tray will come through. Actually, we'll put a seedling tray in here, and this, and the little arms will pick it up. We'll, they'll go to that seedling tray and they'll pluck out. 18 or so, 12, whatever the magic number is, and they will lift it across the line and separate and fill a row of the, in the 32. And we can do four times faster on this machine than by doing it by hand. So it's very handy. Again, it can't be done with everything we have, but we are very pleased with this. And uh, it's, it's worked out very well for many years for us. So. And this is where understanding the equipment oh, yeah. is so really critical. High tech. Don't ask me to work on this thing. It's, uh, it's been uh, quite incredible. And it, it, there's a learning curve here. For many years, we, tried, we had to figure out, depending on the size you were working with, the plant you were working with, you, you have to spend time really uh, breaking it down and making sure that it works properly and easily. So. So here's another flat filler. We have another flat filler, much smaller. And as you can see, this time it's in operation. You get to see it sending its tray down the line for people to uh, access. We were talking about the media itself, which has changed a lot over the years. Oh, yes. The technology of potting soil continues to evolve as different resources are 
more or less available. Correct. So this is hydrofiber, which is a relatively new invention. It is, I think, uh, yes, it was pushed by uh, uh, Brian Jackson over at NC State. And we're adding it to our pine bark. Uh, we have the company we deal with, the soil company we deal with, they will add it uh, to the, I think it, it may be only 15% hydrofiber, but uh, mainly the, uh, the main component, of course, is the, uh, is the pine bark, aged pine bark. Aged pine bark. If you've been watching our videos, you know that's basically gold. And, and I see you've got your fertilizer incorporated. That's correct. You add the fertilizer. All these magic tips of why the plants do so well. It all starts in the production phase. That's so true. <laughs> so here we're taking the divisions and we're potting them up into the individual 32 cell and uh, again, just getting them ready to be growing on into, in the greenhouses, so. And then pass down the line. You saw the splitting happening yep. uh, earlier in this video. They bring them down here the same day and, uh, and they're potting. Okay. I don't, this is what they've just finished. So you see the trays and these will all go out to the greenhouse. And uh, whether it's a cold frame, which is not heated, or to the hot house, where, which is of course, to finish their uh, the growing cycle. And again, they should be ready over the next uh, few weeks, so. There goes the seedlings. There it goes. Thank you. This is the, the soil mixer. It mixes the fertilizer and anything else we add to the, to the mix and it just, just turned off. So I think what'll happen is once it's done, it should be pulled into the, uh, to the soil. It'll be called by the soil uh, fillers, the flat fillers. It's automatically called. So if one of the flat fillers is, gets to, too low, it will bring, it'll call it from here. It, it turns on and it pushes it out and it goes on automatically to the, the fillers. Oh, awesome. And yeah. so you're filling that with this skid steer. That's correct. Okay, but the soil itself is comes in premixed. Uh, yes, not with fertilizer, but it, I mean, the hydrofiber is involved is here. Um, any other things that we need to add? But here, this is the pile. This is it. So, uh, and you see hydrofiber in there, and I'm not sure what else they add in there. But uh, it's a nice, light, well-draining mix. Yes, it is. Yes, perfect it is. for root development. Yes, it is. I've said this on videos before, but it's really important to recognize like there's an entire industry that's devoted to just substrates, which is what this is. That's exactly right. And these have been engineered for perfection. Yep. And we're super lucky here in North Carolina to have Dr. Brian Jackson from NC State, also known as Dr. Dirt. <laughs> and I mean, I think he's touched all of our lives. Sexy soil, Brian. We have, uh, we've set these beds up here. If anything that's established, we're able to pull out of the greenhouse and set out here over the winter time. Uh, these are being sold as we speak, but uh, we do need, we needed the additional space. So uh, it's working well. Uh, you can see our head grower out there checking things, making sure uh, that they're still alive and well, protected and so on, surviving the, this winter and uh, it's, they'll be, the plants will be leaving soon. They'll be gone by uh, hopefully mid-spring. We were saying earlier, everyone, this is the nursery where none of the plants are allowed to have birthdays. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> if they're here for more than a year, there's a problem. Yeah. They need to leave here. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. Keep buying ornamental grasses, everyone. And remember, this is where they start. <laughs> So everybody, so you know, this is a, a huge source of inspiration for me. We don't have this much square footage, but I totally want to recreate this in some capacity. <laughs> so John, tell everybody about White Cloud Mullenbergia. Well, and that's what it is. It's a, a, a white form of the uh, capillary, well, we say capillary, but actually we think it's another species. It acts like another species, more of a coastal, but um, 
it is a, uh, we've had this for many years. We uh, were able to locate some in Florida under, a, it was a different, sort of a non-name. It wasn't a wonderful name, uh, selected name. We were able to get uh, the name White Cloud on it and it started to really, and, you know, once we got into the landscape world, people really started to appreciate it. It does, it starts to bloom uh, in October. And it holds this. Here we are in January now, and it's still holding its color. It's just a phenomenal plant. And you, as you see, it's, it's performing and enjoying the wind and uh, dancing in the wind. That's it's it's truly doing. dancing yeah. in the wind. So, uh, very excited about this plant. It has been for years, and uh, it's, it's one of our favorites here at the nursery. Well, it's certainly one of my favorites. We got a couple trays. Yes, good. So <laughs> glad to hear that. You'll enjoy it. And so mixed in here, you've got Andropogon and Panicum. We do. We have the Panicum in here. We see some uh, Andropogon virginicus, broom sedge, broom straw, actually. Um, those probably popped up. They are not. We didn't you plant, didn't plant those. those. No. Okay. Uh, on the upper side, we have some Echinaceas. Uh, we have some uh, little blue stems. We wanted to get all of our uh, varieties of uh, little blue stem out. So uh, a, lot, a lot's happening here. It really is. And this is all, these grasses are holding the soil in place. Obviously this is a, a bank and uh, we're trying, we wanted to get everything in here. The root systems are holding the soil in place. So. Uh, and when do you cut these down or do you? Well, they, actually we started cutting grasses down at the nursery uh, this past week. So here we are middle of January. We now started to cut a lot of this down. Uh, this bank may stay up though. We may keep this up. They may, or they may go through and select certain items. But things like the white cloud and the, and the pink muley that are in this on this bank, uh, they, they tend to be evergreen, so they may leave those particular plants. Plus, they're still showy, and we kind of hate to lose that. I mean, it would kill me to cut this back. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Well, we, we do want to allow for new uh, for the new growth to come on out. So. You don't have to cut it back on every in every situation, but uh, this particular one we, we may be just leaving it. Yeah. Stand up, so. How many acres are, is this? The nursery has uh, we we own 45 acres, but we're actually using about 25. Uh, this was all tissue culture that we that we acquired and it's been potted up. If you can see that it's not a seedling. This is a, a sedge, uh, it's Evergold, I believe. Yes, and it's, um, so yes, it's, it was probably stage three tissue culture. We potted them up and we're heating them up or so they'll finish. Um, I expected to see more seedlings in here. Well, we got here, these are seedlings, right? These are seedlings, yes. So this is a Carex, Carex bicknellii. And of course they're starting to perform. They'll thicken up and uh, I think we'll be pulling them out over the next, uh, again, few weeks to, uh, to pot them up. And so everybody can see these were seeded on the 18th of January. And today is what, the 25th? Uh, 26th, Sixth, I believe. Yes. But, um, yeah, so again, maybe the, by the end of um, the 1st of March, they should be ready to, uh, to pot up. And the trays behind them, nothing is, I don't see very much coming up there, but again, they were probably done just very recently and we'll, we'll wait another, again, probably four to six weeks for them to perform. So then again, all of these will be shifted up to our 32s as, uh, as they uh, finish. Yes. So we've got another heating system in this particular house. This is our older prop house. We're switching to the new one, as you saw earlier. Um, but this system has a boiler outside. And then you see the black tubing, hot water will go through here. Uh, the temperature will be regulated to heat this tray and force the seedlings to grow in the middle of the winter time. So we 
we've actually, we collected these plants out of the cold frames and, or the greenhouse. We've cleaned them up in another location and these are going to leave. They'll be shipped out over the next couple of days. So again, uh, these are 32 trays. They've all been checked for weeds, for uh, dead plants and so on. So whenever the customer receives this tray, there will be a good solid root system, good tops, uh, no weeds, uh, and no and dead plants. And no dead plants. This is what this is what we uh, we strive for, making sure there are no dead plants here uh, or being sent out. So, uh, and again, we'll ship. We'll put them in boxes, two trays per box. We'll put them on wooden uh, racks to handle 48 to 56 trays, um, or we'll put them on a truck that will leave the property and go straight to the destination. So. Uh, several different ways uh, to ship with, for us, and, and they all work pretty well. So a Prius load is not ordinary. It, that is, a Prius load is not ordinary. We have done it before, but it is not the, uh, an ordinary. It's work. not the most efficient way it, to it ship your plane. It works very well. You saw the pictures, it works very well. Lean <laughs> stacking is a wonderful thing. <laughs> so. Just to remind everybody, this is a wholesale nursery. <laughs> So this is not open to the public, and it's really a, a special opportunity for you to get a behind the scenes peek as to how ornamental grasses make their way through the industry and, and ultimately land on your properties. But they're making an exception for me <laughs> because John and I have been friends for a really, really long time. <laughs> Bree is the plant lady, that's for sure. Well, everybody, we hope you enjoyed our tour from Hoffman Nursery. I know I had a great time. I did too. I've been friends with John for 18 years. Of course, the first half of my career, I worked in nursery production as a propagator and grower. And I'm so grateful for the friendships that I have developed. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that you all will, you know, think of this video now when you go to the garden center and understand what went into making it so that that plant is possible for you to buy. And now we're gonna get the Prius unloaded and be sure to subscribe and stay tuned as we continue to make progress over at the Carolina Garden House as we start to plant the herbaceous ground plane layer in the native shrub border. Thanks so much for watching everybody.